All right, Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself. That's right. This system glorifies, take pride in herself so often, right? How often have you heard the Catholic individual says, go to the church, go to the church. It's the church. It's the church. Mother church, mother church. Come back to Holy Mother Church. I mean, us Bible believers, we don't do that. We say, go to the Bible, go to the Bible. Yeah. And, they, and they call us bibliolaters. Yeah. But these people, they're church building worshipers. Yeah, yeah, come on. Okay, so let's look at Revelation 18. See, so she takes glory in her system. There is no doubt about that. And lived deliciously. She did. She enjoyed a delicious life. Why? The riches and the soul she was eating up. So much torment and sorrow give her. That's what God says. Give her torment. Give her sorrow. Amen. For she saith in her heart, what did she say to in her heart to herself? I sit a queen, a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. She said in her heart that she's a queen. She's not a widow. She's still a mother giving birth to children, right? See all these children she was giving birth all around the world? In fact, the, the EU, they put as the head, the Pope. Why? Because that's the birth of so many daughters that it gave birth, this Catholic Church system. Today, it still does that. But anyways, if we return to our main text, she says that she shall see no sorrow. Yeah, she doesn't see sorrow because she's so wealthy. She's living deliciously. Still, the number one religion in the world is not Islam. It is Roman Catholicism. That's how big that thing is. Now, let's look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 47, Isaiah 47. Now, notice over here that this is definitely referring to Babylon. This cannot refer to Israel. Let me repeat that again. This is not a reference to Israel. And this passage is proof that Israel is not a part of this Babylon system. She says she sits as a queen, right? What religion professes to have a queen in its religion? Roman Catholic Church. They take Semiramis from Babylon yeah. and uh, put a fake name on her as the Virgin Mary. And they say she's the queen of heaven. But look at Isaiah chapter 47. Yeah. We're going to read... Verse 5, sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. See that? She's connected to Babylon, Chaldeans. It's not speaking to Israel. Look at verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. See that? It's Babylon. It's not Israel. Notice interestingly it says, O what? Virgin. What religion professes to have a virgin in it? Yeah. It screams Roman Catholic so many times. We're going to read verse 6. Uh, let's see. Not verse 6. We will read verse 7. And thou saidst, I shall be a lady forever. Now look at the wording here. So similar to Revelation 18. I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, Near, just remember the latter end of it. Look at that, latter end. See, it's tribulation timeline. Therefore, hear now this, thou art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, I am and none else beside me, wow. and I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. That matches Revelation 18 to a T. She says, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm a queen, I will not be a widow forever. I shall be a lady forever. So this, notice the context. This is not the nation of Israel God was speaking to. It was speaking to Babylon, the Chaldeans. But we see over here that this is more prophetic. It's a future timeline, the tribulation. There's no doubt it fits over here. This is not Israel. This is proof again. This cannot be the same as Israel. It's not. I want you to look at another interesting thing. Look at verse 2. Take the millstones and grind meal. That's what's noticeable about Babylon. Now remember this because I'm going to show it later on in Revelation 18. That shows they go hand in hand. Now go to back to Revelation 18. 
Revelation 18. Now remember, the goal of this Bible study is literally, you know every single word, verse by verse. So pay attention to how I explain it. It might sound redundant to you, but I do it for a reason. It's so that you can remember it, and it'll become natural to you, so that in your normal Bible reading, it can come like a common sense natural th reaction. This is how this word would mean, which, is, which does work. I notice a lot of my members improve Bible reading because of that. So that's why I do verse-by-verse -verse Bible studies. It's very important you listen to them. Okay, let's look at verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. So God sends all the plagues upon Babylon. Now notice it says in one day. Now that's the question. That's the question. <coughs> Excuse me. So we don't know <coughs> when God is sending the judgment. When God is sending the judgment upon Babylon, we don't know exactly how long it will be. Now you might say, but it said one day, Pastor. Uh, yeah, but keep reading. If you go back to, if you keep reading Revelation chapter 18, it mentions about one hour as well. Yeah. Look at verse 17, verse 17. For in one hour so great, riches is come to naught. See that? Mm -hmm. So it's burned up. Uh, let's look at Revelation chapter 17. Yeah. Remember that wording about one hour? Yeah. Who has that power? At verse 12. Kings, yeah. Yep, the ten kings. Those ten demoniacs. Verse 12. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. That's the reason why I really hesitate to put this as literal one day, one hour. I feel like that the Lord... Because Revelation, undoubtedly, it is going by a biblical clock, a biblical timeline. For example, I mentioned to you a lot of different examples at our previous Revelation chapters. It mentions a time, times, and half a time, right? Daniel chapter 9, I mentioned to you before about 70 weeks. But then that last week would be seven years. So see, the biblical prophetic clock. When God, when God talks about a clock in prophecy, a clock in prophecy, you have to be careful not to take it literally as 24 hours in one day. You have to see that as God's timing, a biblical calendar and timing. In my opinion, so I'm saying as an opinion because it could, I could be wrong about this, but what it really looks like is this is a biblical clock, not a literal 24-7. You might say, why? Because of context. Context is extremely important. When you look at context, you know the intention of the author on why he uses those words. Amen. So I looked at those uh, verses before by context of 17 and 18. It seems more like a biblical clock. I don't know how long that is. One day, one hour. I really don't know how long that is. But we do know this. This is definitely a short time. If God says one day... If God says one hour, you know that that's a short time period, yeah. nevertheless. So whatever their time period is, it's a very short time. Let's look at verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. So all in this one day, the Lord's going to send forth this plagues and this judgment all at once. Now this shows also by context of the same verse itself, it makes you wonder if it is really one day. Yeah. Death and mourning and famine. Yeah. I don't really see it as famine when you skip two meals, you know. Pastor, I suffered a famine yesterday. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. So that's why I feel like that this one day is more like a uh, prophetic clock on whatever this length of time is. But she's getting death and she's getting mourning as well. A lot of people mourning over the death sorrow, and famine, people starving to death. Now notice that this death, famine, and etc. matches similarly with the seals that were opened up at Revelation 6, right? So it makes you wonder this, is that if this is at the latter timeline of the tribulation, and at the seals, undoubtedly at the seals, those are early. You might say, why? Because after the fourth seal, which is death, and then the third seal, which is famine, 
you got the fifth seal, which is the martyrs being killed. And this one over here is way after the martyrs. So what is God doing? God's showing no mercy. So God considers this not as seals judgment, but what? Vials judgment. Remember the vials? It's horrible. Yeah. But what God's doing to Babylon, he does addition with the vials. He puts death, mourning, and famine. Why? Because of verse 6, double unto her, right? Maybe that means double the seal. It could perhaps mean double the seal of judgment. That might be interesting. Okay. All righty. Sean's doing a word search right now. Stop, brother. Okay, we're going, we're going to the next verse. <laughs> I like messing with the brother. Amen. The dots. <laughs> Connecting the dots, right? Yeah, yeah amen. Dots. Amen, bro. I love it when I have uh, people in my church who are studying, amen? amen? Who connect the dots, so to speak, who are studying. All right, but anyways, let's look at verse 8, the next part of verse 8. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. So she's being... She's getting judged with fire over here. The Lord's burning her up. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. God is strong when he's judging her. So if he doubles the damnation, that's something big. It makes a lot of sense where Matthew chapter 23, those Pharisees imitate the Babylon system. Like these guys. Long robes being called father. And God said to them what? He's going to, he mentioned greater the damnation and that you are twofold more of the child of hell. That's why God said at verse 4, come out of her so you don't partake in the plagues. That's why we are very anti-Catholic. You have to understand that. There's a good reason behind it. There's a very good reason you have to understand. All right, let's look at verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication... And live deliciously with her. So notice this spiritual application. Okay, it's not literal physical. It's a spiritual application. Different, uh, I already explained that metaphor, right, to you? Different nations, kings around the world, they combine their body of nation with her, fornicate, and they share the riches with her. They live deliciously together. Which is undoubtable because you look at you look how the Catholic Church is involved in all sorts of businesses. That religion is inescapable in nearly every business you find around the world, pretty much, or politics. Yeah. Yeah. That religion is everywhere. A lot of people, that's why they say that, no, this is talking about America, not the Roman Catholic Church. Because doesn't it make sense that America is the most successful business? Okay, I get that, but the problem is you got way too many verses at chapter 18 and 17 that pointed out the Roman Catholic Church system. Not only that, it's a religious system. And not only that, God condemns the economics of this system. So then if anybody partakes in the economics of America, then are we partaking in her plagues then? So I guess we're all damned because we have a job here in America. See, that don't make sense. But I'll tell you what, if you work for the Roman Catholic Church, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. See, so that's why anything that has to do with Roman Catholic, you should avoid that. Amen. You should avoid that kind of business. But look at Hollywood, look at the bankers, look at the big rich guys, the, even the elite ladder. You'll see Catholic. It's okay. inescapable. Okay. Look at the schools, the universities, okay. Jesuits. They're known to be very, uh, they're known to be top scholars. So, Okay, so let's look at verse 9. The second part, shall bewail her and lament for her. Of course they're going to wail for her. They're going to cry for her. I mean, didn't the whole world pretty much would mourn after, uh, if, a, if the Pope were to get shot today, that wouldn't the whole world mourn for that? All nations around the world and put that on the front page news? Of course they would. They would do that. Let's keep reading. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. When they see the smoke coming out while she's burning, they're going to be wail. They're going to be in tears. Verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment. No kidding. They're going to be miles away. When God sends a judgment, they're all going to be all far away looking at her judgment, looking at her burning. Can you imagine where CNN, NBC, and all these news media, Fox News, where they posted, uh, where they posted in their headline news of these two witnesses beheaded and all the tribulation saints beheaded and this image of the beast, everybody bowing down and worshiping, and they said, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful statue? And oh my, is it burning? That statue is burning. Oh my! Oh no, it's burning! Oh, it's horrible! 
temple and then all at the mainline use from afar off, they're all yeah. going to be wailing seeing that statue burn. I'll tell you what, that's not something to be in tears over. Hallelujah. That's yeah. something to rejoice over when Amen. these statues, these idols, this wicked system burns. Come on. Because Amen. it has damned too many souls. Yeah. Amen. Let's uh, keep reading over here. Standing afar off for the fear of our torment. Yeah, they're scared. Saying, alas, alas. So that's a old English wording. You know, alas, just like our hymn, alas and did my Savior bleed. When we sing at the cross. So alas is like a, a phrase, a metaphorical expression that you would use like, oh, like that, so yeah. to speak. Alas. Alas, alas. It repeats twice because that's normal for English metaphorical phrasing and expression. That great city, Babylon. So Babylon's a great city, undoubtedly. That mighty city, it's a city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. So now it says it's in one hour that the judgment comes. With whatever, how long that is. Verse 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. That's right. All business partners around the world, they're going to be weeping and wailing when she burns up. <clears throat> if you doubt me, I mean, look at this. Aren't today's businesses already trying to get involved in political issues? Yeah. Open up Netflix. The first thing that will pop up is Black Lives Matter. Open up Amazon. You want to buy an item. Black Lives Matter. I mean, that, that's like the first thing you find, something political. You don't think that after this thing burns down that Amazon's going to post in its front page, we wail, we bewail, we mourn the fellow, the, the, the over one billion Catholic followers that their church has burned down. They're going to do that. I mean, Nef you're going to see that the first page when you turn on Netflix. Okay, let's return to our main text over here. So all the businesses, they are going to be mourning. The latter part says, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Correct. So these business owners, they won't be able to have business dealings that's connected to Vatican, that's connected to Rome. Now, here's the thing is that the Roman, this shows this, the Roman Catholic Church, what's going to rule over all the world during the timeline of the tribulation? It's the Roman Catholic Church, correct? Because that's the Antichrist religion, his system, correct? Remember... The Antichrist incarnate who's sitting on the Antichrist incarnate, the dragon, who's sitting on him. It's the woman, right? Mm -hmm. See, so undoubtedly the Antichrist Satan incarnate, his system is built upon the Roman Catholic Church. So when he rules over all the world, that's why it makes sense, according to the Club of Rome, how they divide it into ten different empires. Yeah. See that? So what's going to happen is the Roman Catholic Church, if you think they're powerful now, with when you, look at, when you look at all the bankers, people claim they see a lot of Jews, which is true. You can see a lot of Jews involved in the banking business, which is why they tie them to the evil elites. But you're going to find, uh, they ignore a lot of Catholics you can find in the yeah. banks, banking yeah. system too. There's a lot of them. It's easy to blame and concentrate on Jews in Hollywood because there are a lot of Jews in Hollywood who are powerful. But look, do they ignore the Roman Catholics too? Yeah. A lot of powerful people, Catholic by religion, yeah. in Hollywood as well. So uh, notice this, this is the Antichrist tactic, is to focus on the nation of Israel as the enemy. To think that Babylon is the city of Jerusalem, Israel, and to hide the mother, the Roman Catholic Church. That's why she's known as a mystery. That's why the Antichrist is known as mystery of iniquity. You know what? You have to hide them. Yeah. And what better way to hide them than replace it with God's nation, the nation of Israel. And that's why the Antichrist, they're going to blame the Jews. They're going to turn against the nation of Israel. Yeah. A lot of people getting into conspiracy stuff, they'll join that bandwagon. Yeah. So you better watch out for that. You better watch out for that. But you see Jews involved in all this elite stuff. Well, you'll find that in Christian churches too. Does that make Christianity the bad guy? Doesn't make sense. You'll find anybody involved in any evil system. Okay, let's return. <clears throat> Verse 11. So they can't buy merchandise trade with her anymore because remember, this church is going to rule over all the world. It, every business is going to tie to Roman Catholic. That's going to happen in the future. Keep your eyes peeled when you see a business becoming more Catholic or Catholic sympathetic. It's going to eventually get th this mother church to rule over it in time. 